Hello there. <clears throat> I'm Scotty, and you're not. And oh, well, it's time for to be Tuesday. Oops. Um, <clears throat> I've known one in a while. So this is to be Tuesday, but it's also my to be pick for the pick your poison challenge. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, and I have picked three ninjas, which is a movie I watched. A lot as a kid, man. I love this movie. I hadn't watched it in a while since, like, I don't know, before 2010, I think. Maybe, maybe after. I don't know. The mid 2010s, maybe. 2012. It's been a while, right? This was on Tubi, of course, obviously. And. Whew, excuse me. Uh, the movie is about these three kids, three ninjas, young ninjas, or ninja if you're going to be appropriate, who are trained by their grandfather. Their names are Sam Samuel, Jeffrey, and Michael, and they are trained by their grandfather, Mori Tanaka, played by the great, late great Victor Wong. And he trains them in his secret house in the woods. The ninjutsu karate teachings, and he gives them all names: Rabayel, Donatello, Leonardo, and Michelangelo. No way, that's the wrong one. Uh, Rocky, Colt, and Tum Tum. <clears throat> but we also find out later that their dad doesn't really approve of this, and I know there's some there's some confusion. Oh, why uh, are they? They're all white. Kids and they have a Japanese grandfather. Well, it is explained that while Mori is Japanese, his wife was Caucasian, and they gave birth to a mixed race woman who is the boy's mother. Now, at first, I'm thinking, well, shouldn't they have some kind of Japanese? Well, they all have sort of dark hair, which would imply uh, Rocky has lighter hair like his father, but the rest have darker hair, so it's kind of supposed to be sort of, but they're all little white boys. I don't know, but, yeah. And, I, you know, growing up, I'm like, why isn't one of them red? Blue, green, and yellow. Those are the colors. Why aren't they red? And then I'm watching today, I'm like, the grandfather's color is red. Because they like they show the mask. Each mask has a different color. I'm like, well, why isn't there a red one? The grandfather is red, but he never wears a full red outfit. He wears a black ninja suit. So... I don't know. <clears throat> and you know, back in the 90s, when you think of Rocky, you think of Power Rangers. You know, because Rocky was the second Red Ranger. I'm more from Power Rangers. And so there's a Rocky here, but he's blue. He's green. Colt is blue. Tum Tum is yellow. So, <clears throat> yeah. So after some of the grandfather, they go back and they go back box to school. And uh, Rocky has a sort of girlfriend named Emily. Who is only in this movie. There are sequels. And I'll kind of touch on them. I haven't seen all of them. There's three other sequels. And I'll kind of touch on them at the end. Just to talk about them. But uh. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, we meet the villain of this story. Is Snyder. Who is a former pupil of Maury's. Who has turned to a life of crime and has an army of ninja at his beck and call, I guess you'd say it. Uh, he tries to talk Maury into come teaching his students how to do it properly. Maury says no. And so uh, he gets busted with weapons. This ridiculously painted, supposed to be a nuclear missile or something. I don't know. It was like some kind of a nerf. He gets away, of course, and uh, I do watch it this time. I I, I do. I've always, I think I've always found it this way, but I find it very ironic. <sighs> Excuse me. I find it very ironic that the guy that the boy's dad is after just so happens to be the former pupil of the grandfather. Like just that connection is just very coincidental. It's very convenient for that connection to be there. You know what I mean? 
yeah, so kids go back to school. And so I was kind of confused on this. A version I've always watched. Uh, they play the basketball game against the kid, against the bullies, and they win. But watching this one, they lost. And at the end of the, the movie, they fight them to get the bikes back. Now, I've seen this version before. There was a version, there was one that was on YouTube that was like this too. A few years ago, that's probably back the last time I watched it. But it was on YouTube, I don't know it's still on it, it was like YouTube. And, uh, they had that version, I always thought... Day one. Well, I watched the Nostalgia Critics review for it. And in his review, he mentioned that they won the basketball game from the bullies. And I'm like, wait. No, they didn't. They lost. He's like, of course, they played the basketball game and they won their bikes back. No, they didn't. They lost. And then at the end of the review, they show the credits at the docks. And I'm like, wait, no, there's a scene after that where they, huh? Well, turns out. I did some research, right? And it turns out the version that I saw on YouTube, and it's also on Tubi, is the international extended version. A couple of minutes extended here and there, but most notably, in the international extended version, the boys lose the basketball game and use their karate skills, or their ninjutsu skills, to get them back at the end of the movie. However, I feel like this version goes against the teachings. Because the whole movie, right, I, f I feel like like this was cut from, they say, oh, this was cut from the movie because of violence at the end. So they had to do an alternate take where they lost, where they won. So they didn't, but for me, I feel like, I feel like this version where they fight at the end goes against their teachings. They're told by their grandfather, never fight. You know, you shouldn't use your martial arts moves unless you absolutely need to. And they've been through this whole adventure and the whole movie. Remember, we can't fight, we can't fight, we can't fight. And even like when they take on the 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 three kidnappers, they're like, let's use our moves to beat them. And they use a bunch of Home Alone traps. So they don't really use that karate. I mean, they use a little bit. But it's not completely that karate. Like, no, I'll get to that scene. But yeah, uh, yeah, it's very interesting. I know there was two different cuts of this movie. It's very interesting. But I remember the VHS version I grew up with. They won, and then moved on. But yeah, I have seen this version before on a YouTube a version that was on YouTube, but years ago. But. Yeah, it's just very interesting to think about that. Two different versions. But yes, yeah, so in the version I watched, they lost the basketball game, right? So they don't have the bikes, and uh, they had to, may have to change some dialogue, but like they're at the you know, that little coffee can thing that they talk to her, somehow reaches across the street something I don't know uh, it's a setup for later and so Snyder tells his associate Brown to get someone to kidnap the kids so they can use against Sam and Maury basically and he sends his nephew Fester and his two buddies they're all like well bro did 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 uh a lot of people have said this is like a cross between Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Home Alone. Even the cover of the DVD says that, which I've seen. Nostalgia Critic pointed out it does say that. Uh, but yes. And, uh, yeah, so they get in there to kidnap them. They subdue the babysitter and then they go after the kids. And this is where the Home Alone stuff comes in. They set up traps. They throw, like, little pouches full of, like, garlic powder and, and cayenne pepper in their face. It burns. <clears throat> and I'm sorry. But they, like, they get in their face. And they find a sink. Excuse me, my throat's dry. And they just sort of use the water to fuss out their eyes. 
but it wouldn't it it wouldn't like the feeling the burning feeling wouldn't subside that quickly they still wouldn't be able to see they'd still be disoriented even if they put that in their eye eyes your eyes are very sensitive so stuff like that gets in your eyes just because you rinse out water doesn't mean you're i'm actually going to be fine and you get the x lax dumped into the drink which um they just drink it and i don't understand like watching this why all of a sudden they need a drink because they oh this is, hey give me that and they're like going for a drink i'm like why it's not like you ate the powder stuff it was in your eyes so why would you need to i don't know but this whole segment from as soon as the kidnappers come in to towards the end is just fun like there's even a scene of grandma oh we don't want to hurt you just want to kidnap you and it made me laugh i'm like and then he's like, well, let's, I don't know, let's kill him. The way they leave him alive. No. But there's still evidence to do them because they're idiots. So of course they are. And then only for Snyder and his henchman Ransom or something. I don't know. Per Rushmore. Rushmore, yeah. Played by Professor Torotunaka, rest in peace. Uh, and they kidnap him and, you know, not Emily, because, oh, I, that's, that's the point you're thinking, what did Emily have to do with it? Well, while looking around for, you know, after their respective things are worn off, they're like, it's time for phase two, and they go up, and then the, the, the kidnappers decide, okay. We're gonna find something in their room to use against them. And while they're in there, he finds Fester finds the little can thing and he starts talking into it, which wakes up Emily and she talks to him and so he pretends to be Rocky to bring her over there and use her as bait. It doesn't work because uh the other two get the the runny runs, and so Fester's by himself, and so he gets taken out by Tum Tum. And girl, so Fester is an idiot. And then doesn't they show what he kidnapped? And then Maury shows up in full ninja suit for some reason. And he's like walking up. Hold on. They're like, no, no, he's my father-in-law. I'm like, would I would I admit that? Would I admit that? No, it's don't worry. I know him. He's just a crazy ninja guy. Don't worry. I miss father-in-law. No, 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 no. He's just a ninja guy. Okay, he's my father-in-law. You know, they, uh, they argue because they have different ways they want to do it. And then they fucking just decide, you get them back. And uh, so, yeah. And the boys are held captive, but they get out because the ninjas are idiots. <laughs> and then the ninja are idiots. And then, uh, yeah, they meet with the grandfather. And Matt uh, Colt saw a picture of... Snyder with their grandpa. Grandpa with Snyder. And earlier in the film, they seem to have some kind of camaraderie. And so he thinks the grandpa is a bad guy, but then it turns out he's not. And we have some cool ninja stuff, and there's this real cool ninja just like this. Get the face paint and stuff, but he gets taken out by a, the steam from a pipe. I think a lot of the stunts in this are pretty good. Although I, I will say, I'll get wait till that's my overall because we'll get to it. But we get, you know, the grandpa versus Snyder, the final showdown, and how does grandpa defeat him? With grandpa's almost defeated by Snyder, but then grandpa takes the jelly beans that Tum Tum gave him, shoves them in Snyder's throat, he chokes on him, and he defeats him. The end. Uh, international version of version I watched. They get revenge on the bullies, even though that's against their teachings, but, you know, that's how the movie ends. So, yeah. I will say, like I said, the stunts are pretty good, but there is some telling. Like, the boys, sometimes you see them doing stunts, but like at the beginning, during the teachings, they're doing the ninja thing. And like all of a sudden, they're doing in their training, and then all of a sudden when they have to do this, Ninja sneaky, they're in ninja suits fully covered from head to toe, so you can't tell it's them. And uh 
what I don't understand with ninjas where they have to go, yeah, before they attack or before they jump. Like, it gives you away. Your ninjas are supposed to be stealthy, right? You shouldn't yell before you're going to do something. It's like, okay, I'm going to attack this guy. Yeah! He's going to hear you. If you do that, you know, I always, eh, you know, it's it's one thing for entertainment, say like Power Rangers or something like that. You got Jason Defrain going, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. But like, when you really think about it, why would you yell before you attack? It's just, overall, I enjoyed this. When it comes to Three Ninjas, I'd say it's pretty, 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 pretty good. To me, this is not only only Two Week Tuesday, but also part of the series. Before I continue, I just want to point out. Okay, so I have written down every time I do one now. Uh, because I'm getting close to the end, I decided to schedule a couple of these. In hand. So, this is the little schedule thing here. Okay, so we have to today, from when you're watching this, that's Tuesday. And this is Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, which will all be random. Saturday will be the Stephen King category, because Stephen King's Saturday night. I may do a random video for the morning, but it might just be that one. And then you have one Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, right? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And the next Friday will be the last one. And I purposely put the animated category there because I have a movie picked out for animated that I think needs to be the big finale of this just because, one, I want to wait till the very end to do it. And two, it just seems like it would be something to really be out and all to this. First of all, I have another list tentative list for a second pick your poison, poison challenge down the line but for now let's see what the next category is they're mostly dvds i have the ones whatever they are I'll picked out 70s I'll show you so you don't lose mine 70s will be the next one i do and i already have that movies picked out except for the the one the two that are on streaming services, I have them all picked out except for those two. So streaming services left I have to choose are Peacock and Crackle, and I have not looked on Crackle at all, so I would have no idea what I'm going to do. Peacock too as well. I really don't know, but the seventies, the seventies. But uh, what are your thoughts on Three Ninjas? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Oh, the sequels. We're going to talk about sequels. Don't go anywhere. The sequels. So there was Three Ninjas, Knuckle Up, Kickback, and High Noon at Night Mountain. I've seen pieces of, I think, the first sequel. The number two. I don't really go to Japan or something or another town. Or something. I've been, I saw a little bit of that one. And I've seen some of High Noon, High Noon at Night Mountain with Hulk Hogan, brother. But, uh. Dave Dragon, dude. But uh, other than that, I haven't seen much. I know that Max Elliott Slade, who plays Colt, is in the first three. I know that uh, Michael Trainor, who plays Rocky, is in the first two. As well as the kid who plays Tum Tum is in the first two. But they replaced the other two kids around Colt in the third one. And then all three kids were recast in the last one. <clears throat> Despite the fact that, I don't know, I don't understand why you couldn't get, like, all of the kids to come back, but, I don't know. But, yeah, so, thank you for watching. I've been Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.